how how successful it is and how do you see it well it's a it's a work in progress i've uh, appeared two three times before the supreme court and uh, i have some impressions about how effective it can be um, and i think the judges are also clear that at present it can only be for can only be for a limited emergencies so it can't be for long prolonged hearings huge records and so on and so forth now uh, i don't know why they haven't uh, yet looked at software that being prepared for instance by the delhi high court where the entire case file is digitalized so if the case file is available in a digital in a digital board then all you do is the rest of the uh, rest of the screen has people arguing and the judges in front now all this is not being done basically what is being used is the uh, software which is generally available for conferences and so on uh, so i think software designed specifically for court proceedings uh, is is not out yet and if we see that see how that software operates one would be able to take a position this is really extraordinary situation extraordinary times therefore you can't be too exacting and expect too much but the good thing is that at least uh, this was available and that this emergency we could at least keep the lines open i think that is very very critical my next question to you is uh, how the sector and the state governments have uh, been successful in battling the coronavirus or q see this is uh, this is the moment in which uh, we all have to be together and uh, i guess we have to be very careful uh, with uh, criticism suggestions and uh, and uh, additional ideas as to what would work is being a welcome and a sensible thing but being critical of failures perhaps is uh, is not the right thing uh, given the present circumstances but having said that and having seen what's happening in other democracies in the uk and the usa etc uh, where if there have been perceived or real failures of the management of the crisis people have come out and spoken uh, and uh, been fairly ruthless in their criticism uh, now in the uk the prime minister has just uh, recovered from a bout of of, uh, of the virus uh, he had to be uh, he had to be placed in special uh, hospital conditions where uh, he was in the intensive care unit yet uh, those who are critical of his performance haven't haven't really held themselves back now in india there is there is a general sentiment that you in these kind of moments you're not uh, too critical of the government and should be too critical of the government uh, and i think i must respect that i must uh, be consistent with that but somewhere somewhere we need to keep space alive in the democracy to say that something is not looking right now could i possibly say that what has happened with migrant labor is to be applauded i can't even if i was uh, in the ruling party i would have felt foolish saying that what has happened with the migrant labor is something to be appreciated and applauded there has been there has been definitely um, let us say uh, a shortcoming nothing more let's say a shortcoming and that such shortcoming should not continue is an imperative and unless we admit to ourselves that there is a shortcoming we will not have an answer uh, to improve on it and therefore being careful with our words being careful with the sentiment that must not be must not be disturbed in these times uh, and having having publicly said that we support the government in times of of this crisis uh, 
it should not be empty words. We do support the government, but uh, it is important that the government support us as well. This is going to be a joint venture. It, it has to be collaboration, cooperation. For everybody, for everybody, government, opposition, ordinary people. It can't be, it can't be a monopoly or exclusive entitlement of any section of our society to say that we are better than someone else and we will tell you what to do. So keeping all that in mind, I think that greater consultation between government and the opposition is certainly something that should be done. And I find that quite a bit of that is lacking. Uh, my next question is uh, about the suggestion. What would be your suggestions to the uh, state governments and the central government in dealing with the highly unemployment, the high unemployment rate which is coming? Well, see, there are people who are uh, better positioned to, to uh, in a better position to see uh, what is the best solution of our challenges that we forward. Uh, I can only tell you instinctively that there are certain things which which don't require rocket science. Uh, we are still working on getting the migrant labor to move back to its original homes. And that will continue over the next few days. Why it took, it took so long is, is a little bit distressing. But it will now happen. The lockdown is supposed to be lifted on the 17th. By 17th, I expect, most, if not all, migrant labor will have returned. Some have gone back on their own in very, very, very testing circumstances. But if we are bringing the migrant labor back to their respective states, and on the 17th, we will announce that we reopen the economy from the 18th onwards, who will work? So will there be a turnaround and persuasion to all these people? No, 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 this was not right to have come here, let's go back because we have to get you back to your jobs and we have to get the companies working, we have to get the factories working. Now who will pay for them to go back? Right now because there's a moment of crisis, everyone is trying to pitch in, everyone is saying that we'll buy their tickets, we'll pay for the trains, or the government is saying that we will we will reduce the tariff, etc, etc. Although I think it's it's completely, uh, completely uh, unacceptable that people have been told we will ferry you home. They've been asked to pay 600, 700 rupees, whether they're traveling by bus to UP or they're traveling by trains from different parts of India to other parts of North India. But uh, what is going to be the arrangement to bring them back? And what will, who will do the persuasion to come back? Will the industrialists who employ them travel to their homes and say, come on, let's take you back? How will it be done? Not clear. I'm very, very sad that uh, we haven't been able to persuade the Supreme Court that like the uh, time of the drought when the Supreme Court said for three months suspend the ration card. People on I identifying themselves, giving their identity could get whatever the prescribed ration. Now here are people coming back from Maharashtra, back to some part of Uttar Pradesh. If they have a ration card, it will be of Maharashtra, not applicable in Uttar Pradesh. There are people in Uttar Pradesh who still haven't got a ration card. Now, in Farukhabad, my district, I am given information that during this period, 5,000 ration cards have been made. Now, if 5,000 ration cards have been made, it means 5,000 people did not have ration cards. And they must not only have been 5,000, they could have been more. Now, if somebody doesn't have a ration card, you will not get ration. This is long before you reopen the economy and reopen uh, and, and give jobs again. Then, of course, whatever is the minimum cut-off salary that people were getting has to be protected. If it's 15,000, 20,000, it has to be protected. How will it be protected? There's no clarity. There's no clarity on that. Um, the government is doing what it can in terms of in terms of uh, AAY in terms of PDS, etc., uh, in terms of uh, Ujwala, in terms of, of, uh, of uh, uh, pension and, and uh, allowance.
councils for, for disabled persons, etc. But there is no information anywhere. If I want to access for a particular ward, who the people who got pensions here, I can't access it. That information is not available anywhere. I can't wait three months to find that information before I can go and help somebody. And if I start helping somebody who are receiving pensions, then I'm really taking it away from somebody who is not receiving pension. Where is this information available? Why is it not available? It's a very, very major thing. This information on the websites of the portals of each district should say so many people have moved back. So we know if 40,000 have moved back to one district, then we know that 40,000 have to be provided for and have to be taken back for jobs we have to go and find out whether they will be willing, are they prepared and then if they are not going and they are going to stay here, even if they stay here for six months, what happens to the education of their children? Nobody is telling us. There is a COVID crisis of life and death, but there is a huge crisis of information. This is not a war against a foreign enemy where information must be restricted so that he doesn't get or they don't get a uh, hold of information that can be used against the country. This is a war against a natural, natural enemy, a virus. Just as we need a vaccine to fight this virus, we need knowledge, information to fight this virus. And I think that's the particular thing that is lacking. For that and for the rest, I think the economists will tell us how we will get the economy back on its feet. But these, for me, are today immediate concerns and immediate problems. Uh, a lot of lot of controversies is regarding this. Well, if they have, let's ignore them. Um, let's be very clear that something did go wrong. But it was not the only place where things went wrong. I think we are far from far from clear that something that went wrong was uh, something. Uh, went wrong in law. I think something went wrong in, in sensible behavior in preparing ourselves for this crisis. And that we didn't do as far as the public is about this concern. I don't think that they were violating any, any instruction or any law, but they were certainly, certainly uh, not showing alertness about how we prepare for such a crisis, but it happened in many places. This was not the only place. It so happened that those who had congregated in Tablighi Jamaat, uh, gathering in, in the Zamudi Markas, were possibly, for one reason or another, very aggressively tested, which is a good thing that they were aggressively tested. But because they were aggressively tested, the figures that were reported of their had their they having been infected were much higher and therefore it created a spectacle and it created some degree of, of concern and horror. It could have happened if you tested any place, if you went and equally aggressively test Dharavi, you will find possibly similar figures. But I think that's now, now over in the past and whoever was trying to, to uh, fish in troubled waters, I don't think we should give them the importance by repeating and highlighting what they have done. Uh, maybe that's what they are looking for. They are looking for being highlighted. Let's ignore them and get on with the, with the, uh, with the important, important uh, matter at hand. And the important matter at hand is to ensure that we contain this virus. Uh, my final two questions to you is, uh, one is uh, how do you react to the gas strategies that have happened? The, uh, we don't learn. Fire incidents happen and we are told that in future public events will have greater restrictions and uh, regulations so that fire doesn't happen in public events. Uh, the same thing is talked about uh, transportation uh, when accidents happen within their railway or road accidents each time we are told stricter measures will be taken and this will not happen again and it happens again. After Bhopal gas tragedy, if we still haven't equipped ourselves to ensure that, that such things don't happen, 
It's a very sad thing. Uh, I certainly feel uh, deep regret and, and concern for the families who have suffered. Uh, I express my deepest sympathy for them, uh, for the families who have suffered or perhaps will continue to suffer, suffer for a while. Um, but I, I think this is a sad reminder to us that there is some flaw in the way we conduct our affairs. And that's not about governments alone. It's about, about the political part of government. It's about administration. It's about our civic attitudes. It's about each individual who is responsible as part of a chain that to provide uh, safety and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and proper, proper dignity in, in living. And I think somewhere we've gone wrong again and again. It's only a very sad thing. Uh, Mr. Gandhi was in talk with Mr. Abraham Rajan recently, uh, where uh, Mr. Rajan, the RBA chief, the former RBA chief, has said that 65,000 crores would be needed to uh, revamp the whole, uh, the, the poor of the country. So do you think the government would look into it and would act accordingly such funds? I sincerely hope they will. I'm sure that Mr. Rahul Gandhi, our former president and uh, an important, important member of parliament, uh, will uh, very, very vigorously continue to, to push this as he has been uh, many other outreach programs that are addressed entirely to the poor of our, of our country. And this crisis has shown how vulnerable the poor of our country shut our eyes and, and uh, use words of, of, of uh, glory for our land and our people. But uh, some of it was very hollow. Uh, this crisis has shown that we were not adequately, adequately uh, protected in terms, in, in terms of any little thing going wrong. And this time, a very big thing has gone wrong. So I do hope that uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi's Concerns. And something that he said well in advance of what the other people are saying now uh, is taken most seriously. And that post-COVID, that we take we take uh, the resurgence and the opening up of the economy, of course, seriously because that's inevitable and, and necessary and important. But that the social welfare net that the UPA government had tried to put in place whether through food security, right to information, uh, through, uh, through, uh, health insurance, through health insurance, through crop insurance, uh, through uh, job guarantee, through free education for children from year 6 to year 14, uh, that all that will be taken a little more seriously. Instead of using it just to de de decorate our, uh, our politics, I think we have to make it the substance and the heart and soul of our politics. I think that's important.